What is it you want, Barry? What do you want? You, you want the moon? Just say the word and I'll throw a lasso around it and pull it down. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dying times here. Come with me if you want to live. That's it, man. Game over, man. Game over. The Force will be with you. Always. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to 20th Century Geek. I'm your regular host, Scott Weatherly. And uh, whilst we are taking a bit of a hiatus, I thought I'd throw some other stuff out there. Uh, not too long ago, my brother from another mother and myself, Julian Darius, did a short series of uh, videos called we call 20th Century Geek Bite Size. And so I've clumped them together and they're going to be released uh, across this uh, week. I'm going to put them out there. Just a bit of a taster. They're quite short and they're quite wonderful. Uh, each one's a different idea. So... Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy some bite size. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to 20th Century Geek Bite Size. Uh, Julie and I are going to be jumping on a topic for half an hour, and we'll be discussing and debating it uh, through all kinds of different things. In the first episode, we did Marvel versus DC, uh, which universe and which publisher is best. Go back and check out that episode. But today, uh, Julian, what are we doing today? In brightest day and blackest night, no franchise shall escape my sight. We are pitching uh, Green Lantern ideas. What would we do if we had our druthers? That's right. Warner Brothers are throwing us <laughs> millions and millions of dollars to produce and create a uh, Green Lantern movie. So what are we going to be doing for a Green Lantern movie? So... Let's let's kick straight into it. Have you got a pitch for me? What what have you want to go first with your pitch? What have you got? Sure, I do. Um, so and it's pretty loose. Uh, but a while back, the reason why I'm ready to do this is because a while back, I'm I'm completely insane. So a while back, I came up with like a outline for what I would do to create a DC cinematic universe, mm -hmm. and it seems to me that what Marvel did well is. I mean, the key things that Marvel did well are try to stick to the classic version of the characters. You know, don't deviate and have, you know, Man of Steel. He's a, he's a brawny, tough guy, you know, who's brooding. That's not really Superman. I mean, I don't have an objection to it, but it's not what mm -hmm. Marvel would have done. And number two, and I think Marvel failed at this, but is identify what are the classic stories. Mm. So, you know, you're going to adapt like Civil War. You're going to adapt, you know, uh, Armor Wars or whatever. So the reason why I think Marvel failed is Marvel didn't look uh, longitudinally, longitudinally at wh what is the order those stories should come in as we develop like a full universe told over the course of five, ten years or whatever. Yep. So that is kind of the way that I'm approaching this. And it occur and for Green Lantern, uh, I thought, okay, so what are those storylines? For me, uh, I am the only person I know who is the huge, a huge Emerald Twilight fan. Hmm. So it, the whole thing is hinged on Emerald Twilight. Um, for me, uh, Green, the, and I, I got to explain this that that Hal Jordan always bucked the system, right? He was mm -hmm. always irascible. He was always uh, going against the Guardians. You look at, you know, every classic Green Lantern story and he's going against the Guardians. You know, the Guardians are imposing these rules that are just kind of arbitrary. And also he's trained by Sinestro, right? So, yeah. you know, he's, it's like the traitor, the great traitor of the Green Lanterns was literally his mentor, you know, and he's irascible. So, I mean, for me, although it was rushed and it was an editorial decision, Really, Emerald Twilight was where that character needed to go. Mm. That the idea of permanent change, of letting a major character become a villain, was brilliant. I want that. So, for me, it it's a trilogy. And the first one is basically Emerald Dawn. You're, you know, this guy, Hal Jordan, he stumbles into, you know, Abed Sur. He becomes Green Lantern. He doesn't know what it is. He, you know, meets the Guardians. He's all just overwhelmed. Um, I think Green Lantern Earth One is brilliant at this, especially the first volume. 
Um, but I would stick to sort of Emerald Dawn and him being trained by Sinestro um, and being a fish out of water. And at the end, you know, Sinestro is like, no, you know, he has been violating the Guardian's orders and imposing martial law on, and he's out. So when you think about what else is the, the classic Green Lantern stuff and classic Green Lantern villains are obviously parallax and anything you know the the rainbow green lantern cores are out you know because i'm <laughs> sane and have taste um and then so for me the Can second I just, say, just that statement we're gonna get comments about that <laughs> <laughs> well you know i mean look if you can destroy you know my rule if you can destroy a uh, an entire plot in one sentence it's probably not good you know other aliens don't see the color spectrum the way we do yeah. right <laughs> You know, they don't have the same emotions that we do, right? I mean, are you brain dead? You're writing about aliens. Anyway, so movie two is the Manhunters, you know? And so here's the predecessor to the Green Lantern Corps. The, again, so, you, you know, and I would mix in some of the, the Green Lantern annual or Green Lantern special too, which is a huge favorite of mine with the uh, unbeatable foe, this kind of like Borg adaptation before the Borg. Um, and, but basically the Manhunters are on the rise, you know, how Jordan has to defeat them. But again, the Manhunters represent the Guardian's failure. This was all their fault, you know? Mm. And so then by the third, you know, you have Sinestro back and you have, you know, like the, the culmination of an, an Emerald Twilight that is, you know, he goes against the Guardians and an Emerald Twilight that is really uh, well-rooted in those stories that have gone before. And I think that, you know, while it would be, it would be shocking to have your main character, like imagine Iron Man three, Iron Man goes bad. You know? yeah. <laughs> like, that would be so awesome. I mean, I would love it. I don't Superman know. Did it it. Would Superman did it. Did they? With uh, Super Superman three. Um, three. Yeah. They have, the, but that's an evil. Oh, no, no, that's, that's right. Isn't there an evil copy in that? Yeah, he separates from Clark Kent, and he's he's affected by red kryptonite, and it's the whole thing where he sat at the bar flicking peanuts. <laughs> just oh yeah. The bottles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I mean, basically, that would uh, that's what I would do: boil everything down to a trilogy, tell it from start to finish, have an arc for those characters, and if you want to continue on, you can do Kyle Rayner. You know, have that be the end credits. You know, you can do a new trilogy or have somebody else come in and continue those characters. Mm -hmm. Uh, Gonzo. So basically, that's what I would do, and I'm and I'm convinced that the way to do this, uh, the way to do any kind of character like this, is to boil it down to those essential stories, to the essential elements, and tell a complete arc. I like that, especially I like the fact it is a, it's a complete story, and I mean you you know Green Lantern way more than I do, um, but I like the fact that like I say it's it's it starts with someone learning and then almost like the whole thing sort of like corrupting them to that level across the sort of the three films. Um, you know, in my head, I, I, I see that it becomes a saga, mm -hmm. you know, cause that's where you have the legacy. That's where you bring in the backup, whether it be like John Stewart or Carl Rayner and, you know, whoever is saying like, look, this is what happened to Hal. Like we want to sort of keep him around for the, you know, if you want to go fourth or fifth film, but we need someone else in reserve that's going to be a bit more responsible. Um, yeah. And yeah. I, I wouldn't say that it's even that he goes bad. I think that like we're having these conversations about policemen. This is an intergalactic police corps and mm. the bosses in the H HQ are clearly not good guys, you know? Yeah. So maybe this whole thing needs to be destroyed. Maybe, you know, like, you know, they created the Manhunters. How many people died because of the Guardians mm. screw up? You know, um, and then how recognizing like, hey, my personal life is a disaster. I've lost Coast City or whatever you do. The Guardians aren't right here. You know, maybe what I do. I mean, I, I'm not a fan of him just going crazy. I think I, he's an irascible guy who might make the right call and leave viewers kind of wondering, like, am I mad that they did that to him? Or was that really so the courageous right thing to do? Yeah, I think that's the thing is because again, you know, they obviously eventually blame it on parallax and um, all that. 
But so you're saying you don't want him, you don't want him possessed by parallax. He just goes that way. But you, I suppose you almost want it to be, you know, not to use Thanos as a, as a sort of a a comparison, but you want him to be a justify, almost become a justifiable uh, antagonist. Yes, absolutely. I, I mean, know, I think you know, Magneto is the great example there, right? Mm. I mean, but I think we should identify with with Hal Jordan as you know the villain. Um, so, and I and I and I do think, in some ways, this is my redemption of Emerald Twilight. Yeah, my well, odd. You keep referring to him as the villain. Like you don't have to. I mean, you know, he could always be the antihero. But you know, if you're going to be taken on that journey as a viewer, you want to be sort of, I suppose, taken on that thing of. In the first film, he's sort of like he's green and excited. He's a novice and he's learning about this intergalactic. Uh, like police force like that's 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 mind blowing if you learn about that like you know and he learns about these immortal beings that have been doing this for thousands of years like yeah you are automatically going to bow down to their authority like yeah you've been doing this a lot longer than i have so <laughs> of course i'm going to see regardless of like you say how irascible or sort of or, uh, whatever he is you know willing to book the system he's still going to listen so I suppose across those three films, even that first film, you you know you you take him from that sort of um, green, I don't say kid because he'll be old and that, but like that that you know uh, wants to be good, you know almost want to work to be the sort of the Boy Scout kind of thing. And by the end of it, you want to dent that a little bit, you know you want you want Sinestro to have planted that seed. Mm-hmm. And then, like you say, the second film, you know, he still is that good character and he's always going to do the good thing. He's always going to save the people. But by the end of it, like you say, you want that, that dent to have become a bit of a, a crack. And then mm-hmm. like you say, the third film, that crack becomes a thing of, and you want to be that, but you want yeah. the viewers to feel that same thing as well. So by the third film, you go, the question, you almost want the people, the viewers to be debating. Like, yeah, he, why, he did this because of this, but was it the right thing to do? Like, you know, mm-hmm. Um, You're explaining it better than I did. <laughs> no, no, but that, that's what that I can imagine that being a really yeah. successful. You know, that that could really get to the nub of because um, I've always had a bit of a problem with with this whole concept of intergalactic police, where I'm like, mm-hmm. who gave you the bloody right? Like, you know, you're not ordained by any superior authority that says you can do this, other than the lanterns. Um, yeah, and the guardians are kind of evil. I mean, like, there's no yeah. version of the guardians that isn't. Kind of even the other thing that I think is interesting is any version of aliens. I like to have a slightly different sense of morality, like the idea that, like, you know, we're gonna fantastic planet style just land on another planet, they're going to be like, Oh, yeah, Christian values that's what we believe in, too. <laughs> you know, no, the guardians are gonna be like, Yeah, you know, look, we've seen planets die, people are gonna die. It's not your job to save everyone. We have a different idea. Um, and then you get into the question of like, I mean, it's colonialism, right? Like, mm. are they enforcing their colonial values? Is Hal in overthrowing them just enforcing a different paradigm? You know, but that's the thing. That's the thing you got to get to, isn't it? That idea of that. You know, is it is it the right time to replace them? Mm. Um, I do. I always like that in in. Um, uh, sci-fi fiction and when you meet these beings and Lovecraft had a great way of doing this of this idea of these creatures have been around for thousands of eons and like so your lifetime is nothing to them like you are meaningless like you know they have like you said they have seen galax- galaxies you know expand and contract they have seen stars grow and die and you're like but this 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 family of people and they're like we don't care like that's nothing to us Mm-hmm. Um, and and to sort of to tackle that morality would be really interesting actually to see how they would they would do it. So, so you've, what's your you've well, you, so you've created this grand space opera of morality yeah. and um, other things. I went a different way mainly because yeah. uh, um, I, my pitch, my my elevator pitch, is a lethal weapon in space. Oh, wow! <laughs> so I was thinking, like you know, we. we I was trying to think of like Hal Jordan. I do like Hal Jordan. The majority I've read of, of Green Lantern has been Hal Jordan. But when I've watched all the cartoons, and I was thinking of like, you know, Justice League um, from the 90s and the early 2000s, it's John Stewart. So to me, like John Stewart is the, is the when I think of Green Lantern, I, I hear that that voice. It wasn't until Nathan Fillion sort of stepped in, become Green Lantern with the most recent cartoons, I heard a voice for that. 
So I was like, well, even for me, like John Stewart is a very important Green Lantern. So do I just go with Hal? So I thought, I don't know how I'm going to do that. I need to combine them both. So I aged up Hal. And so I was thinking, I want a Hal that's in his sort of mid to late 40s. And he's been around the block. He's been a thing. He was taken up after following uh, Aben Sur. All that stuff happened. And he's been the Green Lantern for like 25 years. And so there's been all these like UFO reports, you know, in certain places of green lights in the sky. And it's actually him returning to Earth at some point. So, but he's always managed to keep it a secret. And then something has happened. He's aging up and he's a bit like, I I need to start looking at a legacy partner. And, you know, I I would have to come with up with a reason. Haven't quite got one yet as to why they keep choosing an Earth person for our sector, because it's a big old sector. So they choose a sector. He sends out the ring to find a replacement, and it chooses John Stewart, who is the antithesis of Hal Jordan. As you said, Hal sort of like he, he's a in a test pilot, fly by the seat of his pants, you know, sort of acts before thinking on a number of occasions, uh, and has just has got through all this stuff and has loved the action. And John Stewart being, um, I'll go with the more modern iteration. So former marine, now an architect, all this other stuff. He's very sort of st- almost straight laced. You know, very regimented, wants to do the right thing, looks and does see the bigger picture, and is then st- almost for all those be you know chosen by the ring, becomes almost stuck by the morality of this. How can I make the decisions for these planets, for these mm-hmm. galaxies? Mm-hmm. And Hal's just like, "Isn't it great? I've got a ring that makes big fists." <laughs> um, <laughs> and these two personalities, you know, are then forced together. Uh, for a, a you know an intergalactic threat, um, again, there are a number that it could be. I didn't want it to be the typical Sinestro or Parallax or whatever. I wanted it to be something interesting, um, and so it becomes basically a buddy cop film in space. That that was, but reversing the roles. So instead of sort of like you know the Danny Glover sort mm. of I'm too old mm-hmm. for this shit, it's going to become the Hal Jordan. Um, you know, a, almost aging out of the role of becoming a, a Green Lantern. Well, and you're all, you're all reversing the roles also from Lethal Weapon because the yeah. you know the old guy is the wild, unstable one. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Well, I wanted him to almost like because of the age, I, I wanted him to represent those sort of like '90s action movies. Like if we did mm. this now, like he would be the Mel Gibson or. You know, mm. those sort of like action stars of the 90s where it was just sort of like, I'm going to go in and blow everything up. Um, you know, like Stallone in Demolition Man and all those kinds of things. And then have a more modern action hit or era that does try and contemplate and go, go in and blow this building up that has consequences. Like we have to think of a better way. Um, and so, oh, yeah, I want to sort of try and address those dynamics. Uh, and I thought this would actually be quite an interesting way of, of doing it as well. Well, I love the focus on them as cops and on using mm. that as an occasion to, you know, adapt the, the sort of buddy cop lethal weapon sort of idea. I mean, that's very smart. Uh, so would John Stewart kind of be your identification character? Like, you know, you sort of follow him and he's you recruited yeah. by Hal Jordan. And you're like, who is this crazy dude? A crazy old dude yeah. who's like giving you an all powerful Green Lantern ring. What am I in for? This, yeah. And I, I would like it. To, yeah, exactly like that. Like, you know, because um, when I want Hal to be sort of, like you say, although he's older and like, you know, a, a little battle worn and he's, you know, he's, he's gone through some stuff, he's still thrilled by it all. Like, he's not totally jaded. So, like, he's expecting, you know, to take. John Stewart up to Oa and to be like, look at this! Mm-hmm. Isn't this amazing? And like, you know, he was like, when I when I I had, I passed out when I first arrived here, and John Stewart's like, oh right, interesting. Yeah, this makes total sense. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and he's like, no, 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 no. Like, look, I'm t- and constantly trying to show him amazing things, and whilst and, and John Stewart's like taking it in a very pragmatic kind mm-hmm. of way, and I was asking those questions like, how is it we're on a planet? But we're, you know, I, with aliens, but we're all breathing. Like I'm not wearing a spacesuit. How am I breathing? And kilowogs there, or right. you know that sort of thing. And going like, what? Like, how's up? Yeah, I never asked that question. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> never crossed my mind. 
Yeah, I, I like that sort of pragmatic, like, you know, what are the defenses for this power battery that are just out in the open? Because I was a Marine, and maybe yeah. you should defend this base. Well, don't know. <laughs> you know never yeah. asked. It's been attacked a few times, but, you know. What? Yeah. Have you, have you ever improved the defenses? No, <laughs> never really came up. Um, I, yeah, I just I'd like to have that sort of you know real con, con you know that contradiction. Um, and it, I, I can imagine it just frustrating John Stewart, like constantly going like, "Yeah, this is ridiculous," and getting to the almost getting to the point that you were saying of like, "How is this better?" <laughs> yeah, like, and then you know having to sort of like come to, to by the end of it coming to terms with like, I can work on the inside and make this a better. Um, you know, defense of Earth. Like there is, there is something terrible out in space. You know, there is something that could destroy our planet. I'm now that line of defense, and I've got to make it a better organization to do that. Like even Men in Black. You know, like mm. that thing of um, fl- it's that like flip it, flip it around. Like Hal Jordan would be the Will Smith character. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> right. You know, that sort of thing. Um, I'm not saying it's new; it's fresh. I just, I just like the idea of of, of dipping into that buddy cop. Um, no, it's smart. I like stunt. it too. So there's also the the sort of like you were talking about reforming from inside. There's the sort of racial dynamic of having a black man as the up and coming and the future, really. Mm. You know, having him see you guys are just flying by the seat of your pants here, aren't you? Yeah. Like, there's no oversight, you know? <laughs> yeah. But that, literally, they call themselves space cops, but it's like, yeah, I almost want him to see it as, like, you know, like the precinct in, like, Dirty Harry? Mm-hmm. You know, that sort of, like, yeah. it's just a bunch of cowboys who have been given these all-powerful rings and then just seem to be sort of arbitrarily sort of, like, applying laws and defending things... <laughs> And it's the Wild West, like the space. Space is just the Wild West. It's all just sort of like he's like, no, no, this needs some order. Like I need to try and sub- bring this up to this next level. I think um, this would be a lot of fun. Do you, so, do you see this as a movie, or you yes. see it like a one-off movie? Yeah, I do. I, well, I see it as being a franchise. I think like you know, you'd have it in that way of sort of like you know, and over time that there, there would be mm-hmm. that thing of their characters developing, and I, eventually, I mean, if you really want it, you just age out Hal and he goes. Mm-hmm. And then you have you could even you know I don't know the relationship work but you could have him on Earth then like yeah I'm a retired <laughs> I'm a retired Green Lantern and now I'm doing something else um, and you know you could have all those kinds of stories but at least three or four films but um, it would almost have like you say you could I could pattern in an overreaching arc for a series of films but tapping into that sort of the style of the 80s buddy cop films of each one's a separate yeah. adventure but yeah. they've all got like you know milestones that are, are working towards something in particular well i think that it's it, it could be very commercial especially because it's fun and mm-hmm. it has that kind of like 80s throwback sort of like you know um I can see it it's sort of like in a, in a sort of like Ryan Reynolds sort of uh you know Deadpool or uh not not that it would need an R but also in the sort of like Guardians that kind of like just oh this is fun like mm. that trailer is going to be a trailer where you and I are going to be oh yeah I can't wait to go see that yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and that's I think you know although the the Ryan Reynolds Green Lantern didn't quite work for a, a number of reasons, and maybe one day we'll get to that on on stories out of time and space. Um, like you say, th- there's a story there, or there's a way of doing this that like I say it's just fun, and it doesn't have to be as zany as um, uh, Guardians. Guardians. Yeah. But like, I mean, I tap into like I say, Lethal Weapon, or mm-hmm. I don't know if there's a John, there's a John, but not John Belushi. Is it John? Well, James Belushi and Arnold Schwarzenegger, Red Heat. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. is another one i love those sorts of like yeah buddy cop films from the 80s and early 90s i think um you know i i, I just I, I want to see that in space basically yeah. well and as a you know lifelong green lantern reader uh this has not been done remotely enough you know <laughs> just taking cop movies and cop stories and adapting them and really playing up that element and getting at some of those ideas and situations it's an obvious thing that for some reason hasn't been done, and I could see this being a lot of fun. 
Yeah, because again, the thing with Green Lantern is, and a lot like with all these other space operas, like you've got a, such a broad canvas, like so many different types of planets and different types of alien creatures, and you know, even those things of of um, like you say, fish out of water situations of, you know, John Stewart trying to be um, the you know the better person, trying to be polite, but in doing so, ends up offending an entire you know alien species, and he's like, oh no no, no you you don't do that one here. <laughs> You know, yeah, don't touch yeah. that. I mean, you know, it could go That's into good. comedy and people would hate it. I don't know. But like I say, you could do, there's so much available to you to do. Um, and I like the idea of having that mentor. Um, and even later down the line, you bring in Sinestro. I mean, that's the one thing I think it's doing. Like you, you said, like, you know, Hal Jordan was mentored by this person. Like, he comes back in, probably the third film. And like, you know, this is where Hal's like, oh, yeah, I should tell you about this. <laughs> Uh, he was my mentor and you know sort of like it's that you know the blast from the past which is usually the third film in a franchise isn't it it's that sort of that's when it comes the, the past comes back to kick you in the ass um in the tropes but uh, you take those tropes and we could play with them do all kinds of things with this i think yeah it sounds great i i want to see that movie uh i was <laughs> gonna say it, it sounds like you could do all of the men in black stuff uh, with weird weapons and secrets, but you can also do it on every alien planet, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> something that you said about Men in Black came to mind, which is it really matters in this dynamic what those actors are and getting mm. that chemistry on screen. I mean, especially with buddy cop movies, you think of the classics, they got, you got to have that rapport. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't know who it'd be. I, I wonder if could you, you know, he's aged up a bit now. Could you have Nathan Fillion step in as Hal Jordan on screen? Don't know. Could be interesting. There's probably some people that could play it well. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. It's it's not original in any way. I like but it. But it, I think it could be interesting. I want to watch it. <laughs> so there we go. So that's our two pitches that we've done now for the green lanterns franchise uh but there you go ladies and gentlemen see what you think you know we've got a, a sort of almost like a lord of the rings level arc that, that julian is proposing you know of uh, intricate plot details and developing characters and morality tales or me just blowing shit up with two guys running around space uh, both sound great to me I'm, I'm loving this idea of the pitches but what do you think which way should we go which, which one do you think and also what do you want to see with a Green Lantern movie put it in the comments below and uh, we'll have a look and uh, we can always talk about it but ladies and gentlemen uh, thank you Julian thank you thank great you. pitches and uh, we shall see you ladies and gentlemen on the next episode <laughs>